Long, long ago, in a land now forgotten, and on a planet many galaxies away, where the three suns shone down like scalding beacons, there arrived a child. This was a child wholly imagined, conjured, and created from the mind of this man, Arthur Moulton, a junior bank teller from Plainsfield, Ontario. Let us go forward in time before we go back. Arthur was a nobody, struggling his way through the workaday world of modern man. He spent his nights alone in his basement, building and perfecting a time machine that would enable him to enter the fourth plane of consciousness and teleport himself to any destination in the universe. After many years of struggle, the machine worked, and Arthur was sent to this far away planet. Unfortunately, Arthur forgot to transport another time machine with him, so the only one in existence was still in his basement in Plainsfield. Arthur had doomed himself to die alone on some distant planet, and thus in a delusional craze of heat stroke and despair, he did imagine a friend. A friend of immense power who would travel back in time and infest the minds of mankind. Behold the Octa Baby! Cock fucker! I weren't talking about you, lady, unless you was interested. <laughs> Well, I never. Well, then keep walking. Don't matter none to me. I've been shot down by better looking women than you. Jock one up for the Perthinator. Now, what the fuck was I doing? Oh, yeah, right. Cock fucker! Yes? Oh, gee, sorry. I thought you was somebody else. Are you still going to be here in 15 minutes? I need you to read me this letter. Well, bring it up here. You come down here. No. I don't do stairs no more. Jesus, woman, you know I got a bad heart. Why you think I sleep on the couch all the time? Cause you're a fat, lazy drunk. Well, that too. Just get the fuck. What the hell? Ah! Ah! <laughs> 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 oh, geez. You should have seen your face. What the fuck happened? Gravity, you fat slob. I think there's a ghost in the house, Boise. I swear to Christ, it felt like somebody pushed me. I only wish I cared. Now you're gonna read me this letter or what? It says you gotta go to job retraining or they's gonna cut off your welfare. It can't make me work. I'm on long-term disability. No, you ain't. Philip Johnson is. Who the fuck, Philip Johnson? That's the name you forged on them forms to get long term disability. Ah! Oh, that's right, I'm me. Well, I guess I better go get my good clothes on and get this fucking shit over with. Give me that other letter. Oh, Ms. Anastasia Spencer. Now that's fucking classy. Son of a cock sucking whore, I got fucking jury duty. Swear all you want, but that's 35 bucks a day. That's the best job you ever had. Looks like I gotta get my fancy clothes on, too. <laughs> Sit your GD holes down and put a lid on the hoo-ha. All righty, then. I guess most of you figured out why you're here by now. Them that has it must be thicker than a polecat's knob. Most of you are failures or you'd already have jobs. The rest of you are just trying to screw the system. That's fine as far as this lady goes because as long as there are losers like you in the world, I keep getting the paycheck. Uh, 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 Why? You're late and disruptive. And you're ugly and fat, so where's that leaving? I would 
suggest you mend your attitude if you expect to actually find gainful employment. All I'm looking for is my 20 weeks so I can get on the UI gravy train. You're a leech on society. Yeah, tell me something I don't know, girl pants. <laughs> I'm not wearing girl's pants. Don't ever talk to me again or I'll tear you a fucking new one. Okay, fellas, piss and match is over, so zip up and shut up. The first thing we're gonna do is fill out this aptitude questionnaire so we can get a better idea of what type of employment best suits you. Does everyone have a pen? What about you, Mr... Uh... Percy B. Spencer. And I don't need no pen on account I can't read or write none. Yeah, 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 laugh all you fucking want. Why you stupid morons been working all these years? I've been drinking and sleeping with whores. So who's smarter? You can use this one, per se, B. Spencer, and just fill out as much as you can. Okay, let's try this from a different angle. Even if I could write, I don't need no fucking pen because I ain't filling out no fucking form anyway. Oh, Jesus, you made me piss my pants. I'll see you tomorrow. It's an all-day class, Mr. Spencer. Just go home and change, then come back. Oh, that's fine and dandy for all you rich folks with your highfalutin wardrobe. But I only got the one pair of pants, so like I said, I'll see you tomorrow. Well, who's laughing now? <laughs> At least I didn't piss my pants, you fat drunk! <laughs> Oh, that's fucking fantastic. Sweet! You funny walkers get all the breaks. I can't walk at all, you insensitive cow. Get the hell off of me and walk. Lord knows you could use the exercise. Yeah, well maybe this will learn you some manners. Please help me! You how to treat a fucking lady. Kevin had finally finished painting his room, and he was pretty proud of himself for a job well done. Then he got scared and ran away, vowing never to come back again. Kevin made it all the way to the kitchen. And he figured that was plenty far enough, especially since it was real close to the beer fridge. <laughs> Even though Alan the Magic Goose was Kevin's imaginary friend, Kevin had forgotten he'd left him hiding in the fridge and was so scared when he popped out that he had a stroke and died. What the... Dead? Well, that's just perfect. Now what the fuck am I gonna do? What the hell happened to you, Percy? The fucking government done it to me. Man, they got it in for you some kind of bad, don't they? I'll say. Give me a draft and a triple rye and coke, and hurry up, I gotta get back to class. Of all the fucking things, there are days and there are days. Jimmy, how's it hanging? 
I ain't here. You never saw me. Whatever you say, Mr. Hoffa. Shove off, Grandpa. I want to sit here. But I'm the foreman, and this is where the foreman sits. Well, tough shit. I want to be closer to the pistol, so hit the bricks. But I'm the... Not anymore, pal. I'm the new jury foreman, and if you got a problem with that, you can take it up with my foot, which is going to be up your ass in about 30 seconds if you don't hightail it the fuck out of here. <laughs> Jeez, what a fucking hottie. For God's sake, he's on trial for murder. I ain't said I wanted to marry him. Just that I wouldn't mind smoking his pole, if you know what I mean. You're disgusting. You think that's disgusting? Try this on for size. All rise for the Honorable Judge Wilhelmina Rock presiding. Fucking job. You got 20 weeks. Job. The world fucking owes me. So then I told the commissioner that as far as I knew, there wasn't such a thing as uh, mafia. And he called me a liar, so then I paid $10,000 to have him killed. <laughs> And you still ain't being reassigned? What the fuck's going on with that? Oh, they's all backed up up there. Most of them assholes don't know shit from Shinola. I hear that. Bureaucratic cocksuckers can blow me. <laughs> And on the night in question, you were assaulted. Is that correct? That is correct. And is the man who assaulted you in this courtroom today? That's him right over there. Let the record show that the witness pointed his stump at the defendant. I have no more questions, Your Honor. Let's quit playing games, sir, and get down to brass tacks. Why should the jury not believe the testimony of my client and trust your version of events? I'm telling the truth. Your truth, sure. But is your truth the same truth as the rest of our truths? Or is your truth a different truth based on things which you would have us believe are true, but which may not be? Oh. 
I, I don't understand the question. Exactly! And yet you expect us to believe you, even though you are clearly confused and have been convicted of fraud and perjury in the past! I've never been convicted of fraud or perjury. I have no more questions for this witness. Jeez, he really stuck it to Stumpy, huh? What he said didn't make any sense. Weren't you even paying attention? No, not really. <laughs> what? Hey, I got needs. Ah, fuck all of you. Okay, class. Today, we are going to work on our practical skills. Specifically, how to conduct yourself during a job interview. I will be playing the role of a prospective employer, and each of you will have a turn at a simulated job interview. Per se, B. Spencer, why don't you go first? First off, while I do appreciate the effort, when I suggested you come dressed for a job interview, I didn't mean to such an extreme. <laughs> there is such a thing as being too well or, should I say, inappropriately dressed for a job interview. It's the only food I had time to steal. I mean, my other tooth are at the cleaner. Just a food for thought. Okay, why don't we begin? Let's say I am a prospective employer and you have just arrived at my office and are seeking employment. Go ahead. Hey, what's up? You fucking hiring? <laughs> okay, let's pause here. Class, can anyone tell me what was wrong with Mr. Spencer's approach? He said the F word. That's right. In the politically sensitive work environment of the modern world, it is important that proper language be used at all times. Anything else? He's drunk. So what? I'm always drunk. Per se, put yourself in the position of the employer. Would you hire someone who showed up drunk, wearing a tuxedo, and using foul language? Yes. Per se? Look, lady, I'm only here because the fucking government is making me. You and me both know I ain't cut out for work and since jobs are for assholes, and Percy B. Spencer ain't no fucking asshole. I just want my 20 so I can get back on pogey. And it's your job to retrain me so I can work. I don't care what fucking job, I don't care where it is, and I sure as Christ don't give a rat's ass if I'm any good at it. Just do your fucking job and find me a fucking job, fuck. A son of a bitch, you made me do it again. Fine. Just go home and change. No, I ain't going nowhere. If you don't like the smell of my piss, then get me a job and I'll leave.
I'd like to change my plea to guilty. Guilty! I did it! Please take me to jail! Oh, that's just beautiful, you fucking coward! I hope my pussy sticks you with a shiv in a joint! Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, given this sudden and strange turn of events so near the end of the episode, I think it would be best if you all just excused yourselves in an orderly manner and got on with your lives. Bailiff, transport them back to their homes. I didn't see you walk in. Why are you dressed like an asshole? Fucking job. Apparently the only thing I'm qualified for is being a movie usher. <laughs> Jesus H! When do you start? Yep, about three hours ago. Oh, hey, did you see the boy's dead? Yeah, I took his lighter. What if the cops try and pin it on us? Fuck, I ain't never thought of that. What should we do? We could ask that magic wizard who's always hanging around out back. Maybe he can help. Can't hurt none, I guess. Hey, there he is. Hey, wizard. Can you bring someone back from the dead? Sure. Great. Thanks, wizard. Now get out of my house and stay the fuck out of my yard. Alive again. Well, how about that? Something's wrong with that kid. You better not cross his path. I ain't here, you never saw me. 